Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Uh, Anthony Yard challenges Sergei Kovalev for the WBO, which is the Warren Boxing Organisation. <laughs> oh fish eyes Frank, how are you doing Frank? <laughs> I've just had some squid with mashed tatey Frank, you would have loved it. With a bit of broccoli. Right. So Yard A fights Kovalev at the Tractor Sport Palace in Chelabinks. Uh, I take it that's Russia. They're going to think that they're like Rocky IV going to beat Drago. But what Anthony Yard and Tunde forget is that Rocky IV, the Russian scenes, were filmed in Canada. <laughs> but anyway, let's have a look at Anthony Yard's CV before I give you my prediction. Uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 Out his first 10 fights Only one of them had a winning record Right, one of them with a winning record Out in his first 10 Out his next 8 Chris Hobbs 6 and 1 Richard Biryani 18 and 1 Norbert Nemes Patty 25 and 6 Nicola Seg Locker 32 and 4, Tony Avalon 26 and 9, Sec 27 and 3, Sequira 21 and 4, Travis Reese 17 and 3. They are all shockers. They're, they're like just a touch better than journeymen. They're not even they're not even gatekeepers, are they really? Not even gatekeepers. And um, reason I know that is because he knocked them all out. Looking at the records, they are shockers. Shocking, shocking, shocking. He's not beat a former world champion yet. Yarde has not even won. He's won a central area. He's missed the English, he's missed the British, he's missed the Commonwealth. And he's just got the WBO, Frank Warren belt. They've gone the European light heavy, the intercontinental uh, light heavy. Basically... They've gone the Frank Warren way, which is what he does, what, he, what he's done all his life with his fighters. He's gone the WBO route, but Yarde, he's not even gone the Nathan Cleverly route. You know, the British Commonwealth European and WBA. Because Cleverly got that belt by default, didn't he? When uh, Bremer couldn't even get on playing, could he, because of his bail restrictions. Bremer were on tagging and Frank knew he couldn't come to uh, fight in England so that's how they got Clever Lit Belt and then they shipped in a, su a substitute didn't they but it is what it is isn't it when you've got fighters when you've got fr fr Frank announcing fights and opponent doesn't turn up that's usually a good sign it's not going to happen and that's probably a sign for Saudi with Joshua Ruiz rematch but getting back to Yard I'm going to go on record now and say, and I'm going to go with my gut instincts, which is what I should always go and forget the hype and forget the chit-chat that boxers say, because a lot of boxers chat shit, don't they, because they want to get paid. Chat shit, get paid. Like Dave Allen's t-shirt is walking around Cunningsborough with, chat shit, get paid. Instead of chat shit, get banged. It's get paid now. That's the moral of the story nowadays. Chat shit. On social media, you get paid. Forget the fact if you're any good. Now, I'm not saying Yarde's no good, but who has he beat? He looks the part like Joshua, and I'm not going to fall for any of these hype trains, these kids with six-pack and big guns. I'm not going to fall for it, because you can't put muscles on chins. Yard's not been hit yet. Nobody knows how he's going to react. Ten amateur fights. Eighteen... Professional fights. He's had 51 rounds and he's been thrown under a bus because they're getting paid. Thrown under a bus. How can Frank Warren talk about home advantage and all that? He's throwing him under a bus. If Yarde were any good, Frank Warren would be building his profile in England, but he doesn't sell a ticket. He doesn't sell a ticket. He's done 51 rounds and his mouthpiece is Tunde Ajayi. Now... I don't want to hear all this about Tunde Ajayi being this master technician because all that pity pat crap in gyms, that done nothing for me, pity pat. 
It don't do it don't do nothing for me. Point I'm trying to make. Point I'm trying to make is this. Anthony Yard has beat nobody. He has not won anything above a, a southern area belt. He's not even won an English, British or a Commonwealth. You know, he's beat bin men. Bin men. For example, Biryani, before he fought Anthony Yard, were fighting guys with losing records like Gia Jory, Bert, Berashavili. And then another one below him, Becker Adulcivili, 3 and 4. Then another one, 16 and 19. Then another one, 11 and 16. These are guys he fought, he were fighting leading up to... Uh, Leading up to Yarde, if, to be fair, he fought a guy 12 and 1 exactly before he fought Yarde, but in the 12 month leading up to Yard, he were fighting pure dossers. Pure dossers. Right, now let's have a look at the other one. Biryani, Nemi Sapati. Right, before he fought Yard. He were fighting, the, the 12 month leading up to Anthony Yard, he were fighting, he fought Callum Smith, he got knocked out, he then fought a guy 2 and 62, then a guy Norton 6, I'm not even going to read the names, I can't read them, then a guy 2 and 7, then he got knocked out by Anthony Dirrell, then he fought a guy 3 and 34, then he lost against a guy 25 and 2 on points. That is it. These guys are patsies. Patsies. Then he fought Siloka. And people are saying that's his best win. Now, before Yarde got his hands on Siloka, Siloka drew with Robert Stiglitz, who had 50, who were in his 57th fight. He then went to points with a guy 12 and 20. I don't even need to go through all these. Then he's fighting a guy with 18 losses. And a guy 20, 22 and 6. And a guy 8 and 11. These are shockers. He got beat by the powerhouse Tyrone Zug. Who beat Paul Smith. I mean, come on. And Callum Smith did him as well. He got another one fighting Callum Smith's left leftovers. Callum fought him in his 15th fight. Yarde has been spoon fed. I'm not even going to look at rest of Yard. Tony Avalan. I mean, Jesus. Look, look who Tony Avalanche for. You know, he's another one fighting guys with losing records. 5 and 9, 20 and 32. Two fights before he fought Yard. You know, then you've got that Zeko Yard fought. I mean, pff, God. He, the, these people are not fighting anybody. Yard's fought nobody's. I'm not saying he can't fight, but he's fought nobody's. And he's going in with a guy who, in my opinion, beat Ward the first time. And the second fight, we're winning the fight before Ward hit him low. Do you know what I mean? This guy is a, is a killer. You know, who he's fighting, he's a killer. You know, Sergei Kovalev. I don't want to hear all that, what Spencer Fear running around saying that he's a drunk and all that. He's a drunk. What is all that about? If it does that, what are you saying that about Ricky Atom when he had a drink before, between fight between fight camps? No, so you know he's beat Alvarez, one world champion. He beat Jean Pascal two. He beat him twice. That's three. You know, he beat Hopkins four, Blake Cavarello five. You know, cleverly six, Campillo seven. You know, the, the, the guy can fight. Now, Ray Leonard and Marvin Agler, Nigel Benn, they all had seven wins over world champions. Seven wins over world champions. So, Kovalev's got seven. It really should be eight or nine if you count the two Ward fights because Ward should have been disqualified. He should have had points took off when Kovalev were winning the fight in the last one. And the first one had him down for winning, so... You're telling me Yarde is going to beat him? If he were going to beat him, Frank Warren would have it on home turf, wouldn't he? They're sending him out there to get paid. Just like they sent Tyson Fury out to fight Wilder after Pianetta fight. Frank thought, oh my God, I'm going to send him out to America. I want to get paid. 
And Frank's time, it's time for Frank to get paid off Yarde, he's probably been thinking. Because Yarde doesn't sell a ticket. Now, if Frank had a lot of money, if Frank, if Frank had made a lot of money off Yarde, he'd still be milking him money in London on them shows at Copper Box and O2. Frank could still be putting Yarde out there, wouldn't he? He'd be saying, go on, get yourself out there and get... Uh, some tickets sold and get me earning some money but he's not earning him any money so they've had to throw him under a bus but they're going to sell it as if we don't win we get paid and we're stepping up there to be great now he hasn't got any earn for that but well Anthony Yard could get seriously hurt and it could even derail his career but Tunde Ajayi he ain't got any other superstars and he's been hanging around boxing scene for over 10 years and he's not made any, any, any great deal of money but trust me, he's going to want to make some off yard, but they've got a lot riding on this because I've heard if he gets beat, he could lose some of his sponsors. So it's brave matchmaking, but these people want to get paid. It's a money business. Anthony Yard, like I've just said, does not sell a ticket. He doesn't even speak. He lets Tunde speak for him, and basically he just digs him in an hole, doesn't he? Do you know what I mean? So, it is what it is, isn't it? But as far as I'm concerned, Yarde gets knocked out, Sparko. They get paid, and Tunde's going to come out with stuff like, well, we got paid, we got paid, we got paid. Do you see where I'm coming from? That is what will happen. So, peace out, keep on trucking. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can get your porky fix straight to your phone. Shout out to Rico and Terry, uh, Ellen in Ireland, the Celt, uh, Claire Marsh and Stacey Cross. All right, peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport, all you hardcores.